Hello everyone, today we're going to build a random number generation directly in Notion. And this is perfect for when you want to generate random numbers or random text. And a project that we will be building today can serve as a base plate for doing random dice rolls, a random quote generator, or even a magic 8-ball. And to see how this one works, we can see that we have here a button that says generate random number. So if I click on this one, we can see right here that a random number will be generated. And in this case, it's between 1 and 100. And as we can see here, we kind of have the log of all the random numbers that we're generating. And then they are pulled into this gallery view up here. So if you want to follow along and build this from scratch, all you have to do is just open up a new Notion page. Now let's go start building this thing. The first thing we want to do is make a new database that would hold our random numbers. So we're going to type slash and then search for database in line and hit enter. I'm going to call this one random numbers. Now you can actually remove all the pre-records right here and then we're going to focus on the properties. So the properties that will be associated with every page. And in here, we're actually going to remove the tags property. So you're going to right click and click delete property. Then you want to hit the plus icon and search or just scroll to the formula here. And here you can just type what you want this one to be. So for example, randomness and hit enter to apply that. And in this formula, you can do a bunch of different things. You can manipulate the properties of the page itself to make new kinds of combinations and little tips and tricks there. And in the description, or you can just type it here, we will paste in the random number formula. And it's actually this one we can see right here. So I'm going to copy this. I'm going to go back to Notion, hit Edit. And here where it says type a formula, I will simply paste it in and then hit done. Now, when I do a new page, just like here, you can see that we get a number. So if I just do test on this one, then I do another one and test and another one and test. And you can probably see that this is indeed generating new random numbers. And in this case, it's between one and 10. So you would be saying, hey, hey, okay, how does this work? How do you get this random number from that formula that we entered right then and there? So let's pull the formula up once again. This is the formula in its entirety. And it might look a bit scary and a bit complex, but I promise you, if you go through it step by step, it's gonna make sense. So all in all, it says two number, replace all, ID, this wacky kind of green thing here, percent 10 plus one. Okay, so already I might see that, okay, it's from one to 10-ish right here, but what is all of these things? Now the centerpiece of this random number formula is actually this thing right here called the ID. And if we look at the ID, what it does is it will generate a random string or a random kind of identifier for every page that you make in Notion. And this random identifier will compose of numbers and letters. So as we can see here, this is an example ID of a page. And we got both numbers or digits and also some characters. Now the cool thing about this ID property is that it's random, right? So if we want to just get the random number and not just a random identifier with numbers and letters, we can replace or just remove all the letters to get kind of a random number. And that's exactly what we'll do next. So we have to replace all what we're saying is that we're going to take this whole string or this whole kind of thing and we're going to remove everything that is not zero to nine. So that's what this little kind of hat symbol is doing. 
It says everything that's not in between zero and nine, you're just gonna remove. You're just gonna replace with nothing. And that's what we see here. And if you look closely then here, you can see that the B that was in between the four and the six, all of a sudden is just four, six. And the A between the two and the zero, here just says two and zero. So all the letters or all the non-digit characters, if you want to use the programming terms, they're just gone. And what will replace this with just this kind of long random number. Now for most cases, this is going to be too large to what we want to have, because we want a random number between maybe 1 and 10, or if you want to do a dice roll, maybe 1 and 6. If you want to randomize between 50 or 100 quotes, it's going to be 1 and 50 or 1 and 100. How do we match this long number to this smaller range that we got? And that's when we have these kind of two number and percent things. So the first thing we want to do is just make this thing into a number. So previously it was kind of this character string kind of thing. So we make it to a number. And then when we do the percent 10, so picture that this whole thing is this number here. When we do percent 10, what we're going to do is we're going to take this whole string. We're going to divide it by 10 and then pick out the remainder. So what does that mean? For example, if I do 10 and divide by 10, that's going to give me 1 and a remainder of 0. If I do 80 divided by 10, that's going to be 8 with a remainder 0, right? Those are, if we go kind of 10, you can put that in 80 8 times exactly. But what happens if I do 12 divided by 10? Well, 10 fits into 12 once, but then we got two left over. And that's exactly what the percent sign does. It's trying to divide one number with another, and then it just takes what's left, what didn't fit in the first number. So in this case, you know, you might want to divide all of this by 10, but you might have this one left over or something like that. And realize that you can only get 0 to 9 through this method, right? Because you're, either it goes exactly in, and that would give you a remainder of 0, and it can go all the way up to 9, but when you hit 10, you know, that's another one that can go all the way in that number. Because if you're 10, that could just fit as another, you know, 10 that you can fit in this bigger number, if that makes sense. So by doing percent 10, you're saying it's a range between 0 and 9. And if you want, for example, a range from 0 to 99, well, that would be percent 100. Now, this is 0 to 9, but if you want from not 1 to 10, then you can just add 1. So a 0 becomes 1, a 1 becomes a 2, a 2 becomes a 3, and so on, until you get from 9 that becomes a 10. And that's how you can kind of skew these things to get what you want. So if you want to do a dice roll, you might do percent 6 to get 0 to 5, and then plus 1 to get from 1 to 6. So that was the theory behind it. If you want me to do it even further, you can just comment down below if something was a bit unclear. But that's kind of the background between why this works. Okay, so now when we got that working, we want to make a new table to just pull out the top one of these ones, uh, of these random numbers. So go ahead and go over here, do a new database. And I'm just going to call this top random. Once again, I'm going to clear out two of the three records, but keep one of them. And on this last one right here, we're just going to do number colon. So that's kind of our title saying, okay, here's the number. Then we want to link these two databases. So I want to do what's called a relation. So I'm going to hit plus on this first one right here. I'm going to scroll down to relation. And then I'm going to link it to top random 
and I'm also going to show it on top random and then add a relation. So just like that, we have linked these two databases and then I can go to my, for example, test record here and link it to the number page. And as we can see, the test record right here comes up right there. And if I do that on this one and oops, that one and I'll remove this record right here. So we've got three records here and we've got three records over there. So now we're kind of linking all of these logs of random numbers to this single number row. I'm going to remove the tags property like so. And then I'm going to add another property here, which I'm going to call top. I'm going to change the type to what's known as a rollup. I'm going to select the random numbers and I'm going to choose the property randomness. And just like that, I am pulling out all of these ones right here. And you can see that it's not the top one, but it's actually all of them. So let's change this to all of them. Because now we want to look at all of these ones and just kind of take one of these ones, the top one or kind of the last one right here. And to do that, we need another formula. So I'm going to click on plus. I'm going to scroll down to the formula. And this one I'm going to change to top. And then do edit and type in a formula right here. And the formula we're going to use this time is this formula. Right? So I'm going to do command C, command V, and change from roll up to what we had. So for example, all. And hit done, go out of this one. And as we can see, now it's just one of all of these ones. And if I would add a num another one called test, and link it to number, we can see that this one changes to 5. So if we look at that formula once again, we can see that we're taking this roll-up prop, that's all of them, and see how they are formatted. It's 1, 7, 9, 5. So what we're doing here is that we're replacing everything in this roll up kind of string so number comma number comma number and what we're saying is that we want to take everything that's just something and then a comma and we want to remove that so if there's something followed by a comma and that's the comma right here we're just gonna remove that so as we can see here this is my might be our example where we have a bunch of different numbers so this is something comma, something comma, something comma, something comma, something comma, something comma, and then this is what it left, right? The 35 is not 35 comma, it's just 35. So the only thing that survives from this whole thing is the 35, the last number in the sequence. And that's how we then, from all of these numbers, just pick out the last one. So if we go back, now we're actually starting to reach the finish of this little random generator. So on this top random, I'm just going to hit the three buttons, change the layout from table to a gallery, do show t database title off, change page content to none, card size can remain a medium or even large if you want to, but I don't think that makes a difference. And we go back to properties and show the top one. And if you want, you can also just rename this to a dot and hit enter just like that. And now you can see that we're displaying this top number. If I would delete one of these pages, it will go to the next one. And the only thing now let's to do is just to add these test records with a button. So above this gallery right here, I'm going to add a button. I'm going to say add page to random numbers. I'm going to do a uh, name. You can do it whatever. You can, for example, say a roll or just a log of any sort. 
Then I'm gonna edit, top random, and select this number uh, page right here. So we're linking it to this one right there. And then from here, I'm just gonna do a wizard and do generate random number, copy and paste that, hit done. And now when I do generate random number, it's gonna add one right here. And we can see that this one right here will be updating, for example, to nine. If I do another one, it's gonna be one, another one, nine, and so on and so forth. And if I just want to clean this up, I can do just like that. I can do a little divider here if I want to and hide this away or anything. And then I can just start playing around with my random uh, number generator. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. That was how you generate random numbers in Notion and as a base plate for future projects. And in future videos, we're gonna apply this to do dice rolls, magic eight balls, and random quotes generators um, to have some really fun in Notion. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please leave a like, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.